Morning, everybody. How are y'all doing today? I'm doing great, but if you were looking forward to Hellblade 2, you might not be doing quite as good. I mean, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but whatever, you get the point. Because recently the news came out that the game on Series X and S would be locked at 30 FPS. You know, what they claim is the world's most powerful console. First, it was Redfall, which I know got patched later, but still it launched at 30, then Starfield. And now this one. It's just not a very good look. And look, before you leave a dislike, before you leave a comment saying, oh, well, obviously the game looks so good, any of that stuff, please at least watch this video at least somewhat through because I'm gonna explain why it's a problem. Yes, Hellblade 2 is arguably the best looking game ever made or one of the best looking games ever made, but there are legitimate reasons for people to be upset that it won't have a 60 FPS mode and there are legitimate reasons for people to expect a 60 FPS mode no matter how good the game looks. So all I ask is even if you're okay with a 30 FPS mode, don't give people crap for expecting expecting a 60 FPS mode and then being upset that there isn't one. And don't be a corporate bootlicker like the people we're going to take a look at today. Because these people went beyond just being fine with 30 FPS, they're trying to explain it away and simp for a trillion dollar corporation. Which truly does not deserve your sympathy whatsoever. But anyway, enough of me just yapping about this. Let's go see some corporate bootlickers in action. Without further ado, let's get right into this. So the original tweet we're looking at comes from Idle Sloth, who says, FYI, Senwa's Saga Hellblade 2 will run at 30 FPS with a dynamic resolution on the Series X and S. Hellblade 2 only runs at 30 FPS and dynamic resolution on both the Series S and Series X. There are no graphics modes, the frame rate can only be increased on PC. The VFX director explains this in an interview with GamePro by saying that the experience should feel more cinematic, similar to movies that run at 24 frames per second. Now, under this post is where we will find most of the replies that we're going to look at, but not all of them. Some of them come from other places. But before we get into the replies, can I just say this is the biggest cop-out I have heard in a long time. Like, either just say the Series X can't handle 60 FPS in this game, or say you're too lazy to optimize it properly. Like, say one of those. Because if this truly was a decision to make the game more cinematic, then why is the frame rate not locked on PC? Also, if you really do want it to feel like a movie, why is the game not locked to 24 FPS? Well, the reason, dear viewer, is because this is an excuse. I've always said this, but there's a different difference between a reason for something and an excuse for something. A reason would be like, oh, the Series X isn't powerful enough to do this game at 60 FPS. An excuse would be saying, oh, this is a decision we made because this is what we always wanted. And it only gets worse when you realize that Sony pretty much only makes these cinematic movie type games and all of those have 60 FPS modes and good ones at that. This reminds me of a few years ago. I think it was like 2020. I can't remember if it was before or after the PS5 came out, but somebody over at Sony came out and said that oh, we're not doing 4K 60 not because the console can't do it, but because a lot of people's TVs can't do it. It's just such a blatant lie and nobody's gonna buy it. Alright, now with that little rant out of the way let's go ahead and get into the replies. And like I said earlier, not all of these replies come from this tweet. Like, I think this one doesn't for example. You're twisting their words. Cinematic is the vision, not an excuse. Being cinematic requires lots of post-processing and in this case a focus on photorealism both with fidelity and animation. They leverage ML and have a virtual camera lens system to target the vision. Well, like I just said, you can have a vision for a cinematic game, but the frame rate is not a part of that, nor should it be a part of that. Because at the end of the day, you can still have really cool, like, cinematic effects on the screen. You can have the photorealistic graphics and all that stuff, and that'll all make it feel very cinematic. Like God of War, for example, you know, the camera doesn't cut away at all, and there's always these, like, cinematic angles happening. Happening. Like sometimes during walking sections, you know, you'll have the zooms or whatever. But you have to remember, this is a game at the end of the day. We are playing it, not watching it. And especially in a game like this, where there's combat and precise parry timing and all that stuff, a higher frame rate would be very beneficial. So yes, your vision can be to make a game very cinematic, but part of that vision should not be locking the game to 24 or 30 FPS. Because again, if this truly was their vision, they would lock it to 24 on the Series X and S, and they would lock the frame rate on PC. I think a good example of an actual cinematic decision or creative decision would be in something like Indiana Jones, for example, what we saw in the Xbox Direct. It's going to be mostly first person, but then for some climbing segments or some slower segments, it's going to shift to third person because Machine Games makes first person games, but since the game is based on a movie franchise, they want to make it a bit more cinematic, so they'll go third person for some parts. That is a creative decision. Either way, let's continue on. What 
what did you expect? The visuals are so far ahead of anything we have seen are coming out. No way this gen gets even close to this level of fidelity and will be over 30. The only real games we will see at 60 is games based on last gen tech. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. All right, so there's quite a bit to break down with this one. First of all, the visuals are so far ahead of everything we have seen or are coming out. Uh, I seem to recall some games on the competitor's platform, you know, Sony's PlayStation, like God of War Ragnarok or especially Horizon Forbidden West, which look pretty much just as good as this game and still have 60 FPS modes. So to say that the only games we'll see at 60 are last gen games, that's just a lie, especially when Sony's current gen only titles still have good 60 FPS modes. But also, you say no way this gen gets close to this level of fidelity without being at 30. Uh, sir or ma'am, I don't know. You do know what a performance mode does, right? It drops the visual fidelity to get the better frame rate. So yes, obviously, with the game looking as good as it does in the trailers, you're not going to hit 60 on the consoles. But guess what they could do? They could drop the visual fidelity, lower the resolution, lower the graphics, all that stuff to make it run better. Nobody is expecting the game to look as good as it does and run at 60. People were expecting them to drop the visual quality a bit to make it run at 60. I know some of you are probably wondering when are you gonna pull off that Aaron Greenberg tweet. Don't worry, it's coming. Trust me, we're saving it for later. Anyway, continuing on. I'm think is absolutely not problem in this game in what nothing is happening too much and we only walking lol. English motherfucker, do you speak it? Okay, so putting aside the grammar, that would make my mother have a heart attack. Yes, Hellblade is a lot of walking. There's no doubt about that. And if it was just walking, then the 30 FPS probably wouldn't really be an issue. However, it isn't just walking. Like I said earlier, there's combat, and one of the systems in the game's combat is parrying. Parrying requires precise timing, and if your frame rate is lower, that increases input delay, which could make that more difficult, or just even dodging by itself. You know, you might dodge a little bit later by accident. Like, dude, have you even played the first Hellblade? Again, yes, there's a lot of walking, but there's also a pretty good amount of combat. Granted, the combat isn't deep, but again, precise timings, they're important. But I guess to some people, choppy gameplay is better than smooth gameplay because of my cinematic experience. Anyway, continuing on, and right here, speaking of parrying, we have a bit of a deflection post here. The fanboy is forgetting that to hit 60 FPS, PS5 is dropping as low as 720p. Yes, that may be happening on some PlayStation exclusives, but those are third-party games, mostly from Square Enix. Obviously, FF7 Rebirth, and FF16. And then you also have games like Jedi Survivor, which I know aren't exclusive, but, you know, it still drops really low. But Sony's own games do not drop that low in resolution. Sure, they'll have to drop, but they hold a consistent 60, and from what I remember, they don't drop any lower than 1080p. I think even Horizon, like the best-looking game on PlayStation, manages to hold around 1800p at 60 FPS. So, nice attempt to deflect, but you failed spectacularly. Moving on, we got two for one here. You might be wondering, why is it two for one? because I put them in the same screenshot. Anyway, I don't see a problem with this. I would even be in favor of dropping the frame rate to 24 FPS to make it feel more cinematic and epic. And then this other guy says, non-issue, who cares? Well, I think this is the perfect time to bring up that Aaron Greenberg tweet. Besides Xbox claiming their console is the world's most powerful, here is the issue with this. Aaron Greenberg's tweet from May 7th, 2020, 60 FPS will be the standard output, but the architecture allows us to support up to 120. 60 will be the standard. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I hear something is the standard, I expect that for every single game. And now here we are four years into the generation and they are still failing to put 60 FPS modes in games. They said 60 would be the standard and now we're still getting 30. That is why this is an issue. You can't boast about how powerful your console is and then still have games locked to 30 FPS. Do you see what the problem is here? Because if not, you might just be blind. And if you are, then well, I'm very impressed that you found this video. Anyway, continuing on. No one here understands that these graphics are not possible on any current console with more than 30 FPS. The consoles are too weak for this, especially the CPU. This has nothing to do with Xbox. This is generally the same problem on PS5. Then make the visuals worse to increase
increase the frame rate. Why is this so confusing? That's how performance modes work. You have to lower graphics and resolutions to get better frame rates, so do that. Nobody was expecting this game to run at native 4K all max settings at 60 FPS. And again, they said 60 would be the standard. And this was after the Hellblade 2 reveal when they knew they were using Unreal Engine 5. There is no excuse for this. And you know what? You're right. The PS5 does have a lot of titles that are badly optimized, but guess what? Pretty much all of them are third party. Whether exclusive or not, pretty much all the titles that have that issue are third party. Sony's own games run very well and look very good. The same cannot be said for Xbox, who couldn't even get Redfall to run at 60 on launch. And that was with Unreal Engine 4 and cartoony graphics. Oh boy, this guy has TTV in his name. You know this is gonna be a good one. Can't wait for everyone to trash The Last of Us Part 3 GTA 6 Witcher 4 for being 30 FPS when they eventually come out. Oh wait, they won't. They'll justify it. No one should look at what this game is doing and expect four-year-old $500 consoles to hit 60 FPS without cutting it to Switch details. Well, first of all, no, they definitely wouldn't have to cut it to Switch level details to get it to run well. But second of all, you know, I do agree that people should temper their expectations with a $500 console. But at the same time, I hate to repeat myself, but that Aaron Greenberg tweet, you know, they touted this as the world's most powerful console. 60 FPS would be the standard. And now we're suddenly back to 30 again. So I definitely agree. Don't take what these companies say at face value. But at the same time, if they do say something and then they go back on it or they ended up lying about it, I'm going to call it out. It's like what the act man said in his Scarlet and Violet video. Please don't defend this. You deserve better. Oh boy, Alex is going to love this next one. Not really surprised by this. It'll likely be a very smooth 30 FPS and all. It's not really much of a big action game anyway. It's more of an adventure game. Again, while it is true, there is a lot of walking and just doing puzzles and stuff, but there's also a decent amount of fighting. And again, sorry I'm sounding repetitive, but smoother frame rates are better for fighting and action stuff, which this game does have. Who knows, maybe it would have been better if they did what FF16 does, where they have like the 30 FPS lock, but then whenever you get into action, it lowers the resolution to jump to a higher frame rate. Maybe that could have been a good idea, I don't know. But dude, the fact that he said a very smooth 30 FPS, oh no. There's no such thing as a smooth 30 FPS. If there was, people wouldn't be so obsessed with 60. Like, I don't have a problem with you're okay with 30 FPS, but don't call it smooth for the love of God. You're just lying to yourself and everybody else at that point. And now to finish this video off, I felt like we'd look at somebody with some actual common sense. This game is going to represent everything the Xbox community claimed to hate about Sony games. A cinematic one and done movie game that's only eight hours long. Prepare for extreme hypocrisy when it drops. And honestly, I could not have said it better myself. Maybe not the Xbox community, but the Xbox fanboys specifically. They claim for so long to hate the one and done games. We prefer gameplay over cinematics, you know, they trash on the low frame rates, whatever. And now when Xbox puts out one of those games, all of a sudden it's different. Now all of a sudden 30 FPS is okay. We shouldn't expect anything more from something with such great visuals. We love a good cinematic experience. Yeah, the hypocrisy is already really bad and it's only gonna get worse when the game actually comes out. And hopefully when it does come out, we'll see enough cope for me to talk about it a bit more. So yeah, anyway, with all that being said, that's gonna do it for this video. I really appreciate you if you made it to the end. And if you did and you enjoyed the video, then please consider subscribing because honestly, I'm probably gonna lose quite a few subs making this video. I've noticed a decent number of X bots in my community because who would have thought when you talk primarily about ponies that happens. But videos like this and the stream I did yesterday are good for that because it helps weed them out. Speaking of which, you should come join our streams every Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. They're a ton of fun. I just got a brand new setup going for it. We tried it out yesterday and it was great. We just hang out, go over salt and have a great time. So anyway, with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't like it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will catch you all next time.